Chapter nine, homework. Question one. First of all, I have worked uh, the first 16 of these out on paper and posted them because they're very similar. So you can look at um, an example of each of the first 16 questions, but I wanna work a few uh, through video just to make sure you understand. So to evaluate a function that is multivariable simply means you need to insert or substitute the given value for x and the given value for y. So if they say f of four negative one, you're just gonna substitute the four in for the x and the negative one in for the y. So in this case, seven x minus four y plus nine becomes seven times four, because x is four, minus four times negative one, because y is negative one, and then plus nine, so it's 28 plus four plus nine, that's 28, 32, and 9 is 41. So it's just a straight substitution type problem. So um, I'm not going to work them all out. You can do that. Just substitute that stuff in there. Same thing for number 2. Same thing for number 3. And again, these are all worked out. Examples are. Let me do the one with the log because you're not used to doing too many logarithms. So it says find f of 103 when f of x is y log of x. So I'm going to put in f of 100 for x and 3 for y would be 3 log of 100, you have a log key on your calculator, but that's 2 because the exponent you raise 10 to to get 100 is 2. So the answer is 6. Again, just substitution. Substitution. All right, so here we have an application, number 7. And it's a similar situation, but they want us to actually write out the function. So we have a cost function that involves more than one variable. And this is why we have to be able to do multivariable stuff because costs often involve more than one thing. So it's 261 for every unit plus 155 for materials for every unit and capital $86 for every unit. So labor, materials, and capital, there's your equation right there. So they don't ask us to do anything with it yet, they just ask us to come up with the formula for cost based on more than one variable. And I need to put an X in that. Same thing for number eight. Okay, now partial derivatives. First of all, the notation that's a D, but it's to signify that we have more than one variable. So it's it's a funny little D. And that means take the derivative of the z function with respect to x, treating all other variables as constants. So let's see if I can do one and make it make sense to you. So x is our variable, that's a constant. And that's a constant. Now, when, there's a, when one of the variables is present, I recommend that you rewrite it so that the y is in the front, because that's the coefficient now, because y is just a constant. Okay, And now, to take the partial derivative 
of z with respect to x, that means treat everything as a constant except for x, we get 24x minus 16y plus 0. So since y is a constant, it's part of its coefficient, so it's the coefficient of x, and so its derivative is just the coefficient. In this case, it's 16y. We'll do a couple more of these to help you get used to it. 24x minus 16y. The second one says find the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Now this time, y is a variable, x is a constant. So wherever you see a variable y, put anything with an x in the front. So it's already written like that, so that makes it... Oops, this is not the derivative, that's the actual function. Let me rewrite the actual function first. Um, so f of xy is 12x squared minus 16xy, and see it's already in the front of y, so that makes it easier, plus 9y squared. So treat x like a constant. Derivative of z with respect to y, so that's a constant, so that's going to be a zero. That's a constant, so that's the coefficient, so that's its derivative, plus this is a variable, so that's 18y. So it's negative 16x plus 18y. Now they actually ask us to evaluate it, the derivative of f, which is also z. Look, z is a function in x and y. So what we have to do is put this into this first one, the derivative of the function with respect to x. So plug in a 5 for x and a 3 for y. Okay. So I would go 24 times 5 minus 16 times 3. So that's 120 minus 48 it's, is 72. So the substitution part is, is not hard. It's just making sure that you understand the notation. All right, so you can do uh, the next one. Oh, but let me point this out. Partial derivatives can also be written with a little tiny subscript. So that means the derivative of f with respect to y, treating x as a constant. It means the same thing, okay? So again, I can leave that to you. This is the same. Let's just do a couple more of these just to make sure it makes sense. So they want us to find f sub x, x, y. That means the derivative, that's the same as saying the derivative of x, whoops, that's the same as saying the derivative of f with respect to x, treating y like a constant, okay? So I'm going to write anything that has a y, I'll write it in the back, so let's see, f of x, y, equals negative 9xy plus 8y to the fourth plus 1. So look, 9x is a constant, so that's the coefficient of that term, negative 9x. And then 8y to the fourth, that's treated like a variable, so that's 32y to the third, and that's a constant, so it's 0. So it's negative 9x plus 32y to the third. Oops, what did I do wrong? I think I ran it. That was a constant. Oh, I did it with respect to y. Let me do that again. Okay. So f sub x, x, y means the same as the partial derivative of a function named f with respect to x. So anything that's not an x, that's a, that's a letter, is a constant. 
So I recommend you rewrite it. Uh, negative 9y x, so you'll recognize that's the coefficient. And then that's going to be a constant, so it's going to have a derivative of 0, and so is that. So it's going to be negative 9y, because that derivative is 0, because that y is treated as a constant. So negative 9y is our answer. All right, let's do another one. Let's do the derivative of f with respect to y. So that means that f sub y xy means the derivative of f, this time with respect to y. And the y's are already in the back, so it's negative 9x plus 32y to the third plus 0. So that's going to be negative 9x plus 32y to the third. And then this means put 2 in for x and 3 into y for the derivative with respect to x. So you can do that. All right, one more. So this is 11. So they give us a, a function, a multivariable function, 2x squared y cubed. They ask us for the derivative of the function with respect to x, treating y as a constant, the derivative of the function with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So if we're going to treat y as a constant, I like to rewrite the variable term in the back like that, or the variable factor. So that's going to be 2y cubed, because that's the constant part, times 2x, because you've got to take the derivative of that. And so that's 4xy cubed. And uh, for this one, the y is already in the back. So that's going to be the coefficient, 2x squared, and then times 3y squared. Remember, in that case, that's the coefficient. It's like a 10 because x squared is a constant. So then we can simplify that to 6x squared y squared. And then this other one, they ask you to plug it in. So you plug it into the partial derivative with respect to x, and then you would plug this one into this formula for the partial derivative with respect to y.